So I'm going to try to be a little quiet this morning because I'm not in my house because, um, actually because just of a really nice blessing that uh, God delivered um, really quite unexpectedly and through no uh, machinations and efforts of my household. Um, but Artie's actually in there shooting a uh, cooking show and not with me. We're still be doing Artie Party this week for those who pay attention to that sort of thing. But, um, uh, it's actually for a whole nother thing, uh, another sort of online TV or whatever you would call it, new media thing, came, uh, contacted her out of the blue and, uh, is in there shooting a bunch of shows with her right now. Awesome. And all praise to his name. And why do I say that phrase? Oh, just you wait. Because that's what I'm focusing on today. All right. Sorry, this is going to be out of my desk and stuff, so this might all look crazy. But. All right. Uh-oh. Still going? Yes. Sorry, it was a troubled one. Psalm 79, 9. Help us, O God, our salvation, for the glory of your name. Deliver us and provide atonement for our sins for your name's sake. Why should the nation say, Where is their God? Let there be known among the nations in our sight the avenging of the blood of your servants which has been shed. Let the groaning of the prisoner come before you according to the greatness of your power. Preserve those who are appointed to die. Bluefish. And return to our neighbors sevenfold into their bosom. Their reproach with which they have reproached, their reproach with which they have reproached you, O Lord. So we, your people, and sheep of your pasture, we will give you thanks forever. We will show forth your praise to all generations. Kind of love that. A little bit, there's a little bit of that tone of, if you do this, we will do this. But I don't actually think that is the, that is the point. Rather, Lord, you have always done this for us. So let us not, let us not forget to praise your name. Because you have delivered us over and over and over again. Delivered Israel as a nation has delivered me from ailment, from sickness, from disease, not to mention the, the, the wretchedness of myself, the disease of myself, the disease of my rotten core, really, you know, of negativity, of fury, of temper, of, and you know, just of, of, uh, of lack of holiness, and I desire to be holy, I desire to be pure. And I guess pure in this world that he has made us, you know, not necessarily separate from it. Um, I'm going to read the second one and stop talking. First Peter 2, 9. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. I like that. Who once were not a people, but are now the people of God, who have not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. His own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him. Everything I was reading this morning was kind of about, about God's pleasure in his name. Pleasure in his holy name, pleasure in his fame as, as a doer of mighty works and as a doer of graceful works, of merciful things, uh, that he reveals himself to us and through us, and that, again, our duty is not to aggrandize ourselves, but aggrandize him. And it was funny, it was like... <laughs> thinking about it even as fuel for the law 
to the Ten Commandments and so forth. And in some ways, uh, bringing praise to his name is like a, is a nice shorthand way you could, you could say it to somebody that the walk of, what a walk of a Christian or somebody who follows God is, is what, what am I doing right now? And does it bring praise to his name? Does it bring praise to my name? Does it bring praise to foul things? Does it bring praise to holy things? Does it bring praise to good works? All these things are nice. Or does it bring praise to the, to the most high? And I think about how often I've been remiss, I think, in just being a hymn to his praise. I mean, I try to let him guide my life in that way, that I might just simply move as a hymn to his praise, but... It's something I need to work on in both word and deed of being unashamed because what what is there to be ashamed of? You know, I guess sometimes I feel that fear of alienating people, you know, of them being like all of a sudden tuning out and not listening to what I have to say just because I'm like, oh, well, yeah, it really wasn't me. That was pretty much all, all his, 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 that was all God, you know, that was all the Holy Lord who really moved in me and, and uh, nothing but the blood of Jesus. And then people just go, hmm, whoa, check out, oh, he's a kook, he's a Scientologist, um, not today, bear with and, <laughs> but today in all days, let me be, let me be unafraid to just let his praises spill from my lips in all company. Why, honestly, who, what, what do I care? What do people's perspectives have to do with my eternal soul? Nothing. My job is to please him, is to please him and praise him and be his people and be his people so that all that I do and say would bring further praise to his name, not to my name. Oh, Brendan, what a good guy he is. But man, what a, what a mighty Lord has, has laid his hand on that human being.